I think a good place to start when it comes to ISO 42001 is providing a little bit of context about why this certification matters and where it came from. Um, so I want to talk about some history. And I think a good place to start when it comes to history is kind of pre-2022, before the chat GPT, before this explosion of AI that we've seen over the last few years. And that's really with security and privacy setting the context for this certification. And I think that's particularly important for this certification because a lot of the key concepts that you see in ISO 27001 that is security and ISO 27701 that is privacy show up in this framework, ISO 42001. So what we have seen over the last decade or so is just an explosion of interest when it comes to cybersecurity and privacy. Both individuals and companies have become very cognizant of the risk with security and the risk with privacy. And the way that we have seen that show up is things like regulations, GDPR, federal and state level regulations and compliance from a business to business perspective. So companies have had to start taking security and privacy very seriously. And you have started seeing businesses enforce security and privacy requirements on other businesses in the form of contracts. And what you saw in tandem with all that is a pretty big explosion of companies getting ISO 27001 certifications and companies getting ISO 27701 certifications. And that's important context because it got people interested in risk, in risk-based thinking, and it got the marketplace accustomed to achieving certifications. So it may be the case that your company, for example, is already ISO 27001 certified or ISO 27701 certified. And we'll talk about this later in a different chapter, but just know that if you're already certified against those frameworks, a lot of the principles that apply in 42001 are the same principles. So you can pretty easily tack on ISO 42001 to an existing certification program. But that's the backdrop and some of the history before this certification. Then in November 2022, of course, that's when ChatGPT came online. And of course, there was there was plenty of AI talk and, and different types of companies that were involved in AI and AI research before that. But when ChatGPT came online, it became the, the fastest platform to ever get a million users. It pretty much changed the course of everything. That's when AI became conscious in everyone's mind. Every company decided to make AI a, pro AI a priority. And we saw this huge explosion of applications. We saw virtually no well-known products using AI to literally thousands of new companies created to use AI. Then in July 2023, uh, almost a year later, that is when uh, Meta uh, released Llama 2, which is an open source large language model, and they made it pretty much available for anyone to develop their own AI platforms without needing to use open AI. And that was kind of a second breath, if you will, of just generating huge amounts of AI products, services, applications, and integrations. And that's kind of where we are right now. It's just there's a ton of companies trying to capitalize on artificial intelligence and use it in unique and creative ways. But there's a lot of risk. And risk management professionals, especially with the backdrop of what's happened with security and privacy, are thinking through all the ways that companies could be harmed or individuals could be harmed by using AI. So that's where we are. We're trying to think through how to leverage AI productively, but also manage our risk, our business risk, but also our individual risk when it comes to artificial intelligence. Then in December, 2023, ISO released the ISO 42001 standard. And from my perspective, that was a pretty fast release. You talk about uh, basically in a year from the release of ChatGPT and the explosion of AI companies to the ability to read an AI certification that is available. That's pretty fast. So here we are. We have the ISO 42001 certification. We have the framework available to us, available to the marketplace. What This is uh, January of 2024 right now as, as I'm recording this and you still cannot officially obtain a certification. Why can you not do that? Well, the reason you can't do that is because there are no certifying bodies out there 
that can officially issue an accredited certification. So this year in January 2024, the certifying bodies such as ANAB or UCAS, the people who permit audit firms to issue accredited certs, have released guidance and opened up the door for them, for certifying bodies to become certifying bodies. That's in January. So we should rapidly see certifying bodies come online and be able to issue certifications. And we expect the, the first certif official accredited certifications to start happening probably mid this year, mid 2024. So if you're watching this after mid 2024, I'm sure you already see companies who are officially accredited and certified. If you're watching this before that time, we're still still very much gearing up for that process. But what we do have is all the official guidelines. We know which certifying bodies are applying to, uh, to become certifying bodies. We understand the audit process and we understand what it takes to get certified. So as at Risk360, we're already working with regulators as well as the certifying bodies themselves to gear up on what this is going to look like and what the implementation process is. So that's where we're at in terms of context and history. And you should be thinking strongly about if I want to be certified sometime in 2024 or 2025, what is it going to take for me to get implemented? And we'll talk through about that in this journey. The next thing I want to talk about um, now that you understand a little bit of the history is let's talk about should you get certified? Is there a business case for your organization to consider pursuing 42,001 certification? And what are those business case, those points that maybe you want to talk about to management? And we'll cover that in the next section. See you there.